and the light pass to Ilias. After the death of Suleiman, his son, Rehoboam, became king. But he was not a prophet like his father. And the rebellious tribes of Israel refused to accept his authority. Ten of the tribes left and appointed their own king. Israel was split into two parts, north and south. In the north, Rehoboam ruled with his capital at Jerusalem the site of the temples of Suleiman and the Ark of the Covenant. In the south, they began to worship idols again and follow their every desire. North and south fought each other for 57 years until Rehoboam's sons, Jehoshaphat, ruled the north and Ahab ruled the south. Out hunting one day, King Ahab encountered a man from Husus forehead the light stream like a beacon through the fog. Ahab asked his name. He answered he was Ilyas, descendant of Harun. Ilyas and Ahab were the same age, young men of 25. They become best friend. Ilyas spoke earnestly about their ancestor, the prophets and Allah. They prayed together and Ahab happily took counsel with Ilyas. Ahab saw the light and became convinced. He determined to change himself and his kingdom. Ahab made a treaty with Jehoshaphat and the kingdom of Israel united in peace. People seemed to love Ilyas and listen to his preaching. Things looked like they were getting better, but Saiton was jealously waiting for his chance. He saw the weakness of Ahab. Saiton caused of Ahab to fall in love with an idol-worshipping princess. Her name was Jezebel, and not only was she was very beautiful, but she was also very hot-hearted and only loved herself. She did not just want to be queen, she wanted to be worshipped she told Ahad that she would marry him only if he built a huge statue in her image and encouraged all people to worship it. Ahab was madly in love. He agreed to do as Jezebel requested. He was ashamed before his friend Ilyas and for a while refused to see him. In the end, he announced his plans to build idols for the Banu Israel. Ilyas, seeing the uselessness of argument, left the palace and his friend. Ahab told his people that he was building them a great god with the body of Ka and a face of beautiful woman, Jezebel. He said the earth, the cow, and the woman should all be worshipped as symbols of the life-giving force. His people were delighted and the building began immediately. They named their idol Baal. Ahab married Jezebel. Jezebel asked the king to sacrifice those closest to him to the new god. Ahab was surprised to hear this from a 15 years old girl, but he did what she wanted. Then she found fault with the priest who still listened to Ilyas. She had all four hundreds of them killed. Her temple was awash with blood. Ilyas went from town to town preaching. Few listened and the others began to threaten him. He suffered great hardship. Finally, he announced he was going to the hills to live by himself in a cave. Inspired by Allah, he told them that the queen would give birth to a sickly son who would die because there was no life-giving force in her 
or her idol. It happened as Elias predicted. The baby son of Jezebel and Ahab became ill. Ahab, now completely under the spell of his queen, sent soldiers to kill Elias, thinking he had cursed the baby. But Allah protected his prophet. So the queen decided that to cure her son, they needed to bath Baal in blood. She ordered that all the children of Israel be killed so that her son could live. It was done. Still Jezebel baby did not get well. Ahab knew that the only one with true power was Elias because his power came from the source of all life, Allah Almighty. But Elias did not have Allah permission to heal the baby and he died. Elias returned to preaching to the common people, hoping they would end their worship of Baal. While he was among them, the idea of killing him or taking him captive did not even cross their mind. He warned them of Allah's punishment. He told them that no rain would fall and no food would grow and hunger would ferment them. But they did not believe it happened as Elias had warned. There was no rain. The animals died. The corpse withered, the people starve, and still they continue to sacrifice and pray to the terrible Baal. Elias remained in the south wandering from village to village. Allah gave him the miraculous power to produce freshly baked bread at will. Whoever took him in at fresh bread, people knew where Elias had passed because the smell of freshly baked bread lingered in the air. Even with this miracle, the people stubbornly refused to believe. Ahab instructed his soldier that wherever they detected the smell of bread, they should kill everyone. Then no one invited Elias into their home. Even though they were starving, Allah ordered Elias to leave Israel and go to a city by the sea. There, she should look for an old widow. This woman and her husband were descendants of Yusuf. When they were in their 90s, they were overwhelmed by the desire to have a child. They were the only believers left in the city. They didn't want the love of Allah to die out. So they prayed for a son and Allah granted their prayer. They named him Aliyah, meaning may it please God. After four years, her husband died and now she was alone. Elias found the widow's house and seeing the light streaming from his brow, she invited him in. He met Elias on the balcony doing what he loved best, watching the dolphins play in the sea. For two months, Elias stayed at the widow's house. Then one day, Elias became very ill. It appeared that he had died. Elias prayed to Allah to save the boy and make him one of his special servants. Elias breathed and sat up. Allah ordered Elias to return to King Ahab. It had been four years since it had rained. Elias and Ahab made an agreement. Ahab would pray to Baal for rain. If it came, Elias would leave the land. If not, then Elias would pray to Allah for rain. If it came, Ahab would destroy the idol. First, Ahab priest prayed. Nothing happened. Then Elias prayed. Allah sent rain and the country became green again. The wells filled with water. But Ahab did not keep his promise. Now Elias knew Allah's punishment was coming and he warned Ahab and Jezebel and all the people. They ignored him and he left. He wept because he felt he had failed Allah and failed his people. Seventeen years went by during which they endured wars, invasion, heavy taxes, disease and natural disaster. Finally, the people could 
attack no more. Jezebel and Ahab were killed by an angry mob and their bodies thrown to the dogs. Allah told Elias to find Elias. Elias thought Elias they retreated together to a cave in the hills where everything he knew. May Allah bless Elias and give him peace.